<laughs> Every story starts at chapter one. Each step in the journey counts. Champions don't arise suddenly. They stumble. They fall. They make mistakes. They quit. They start again. For a true warrior, success doesn't come from reaching the top of the heap. It comes from forging the path. How they survive the trials of the journey. That's what defines a hero. What is up, folks? That right there was a little spec commercial that was completely inspired by wanting to create something to showcase this Zhongi Optics Speedmaster 35mm T1 Cine lens. It is a native RF mount, so it was shot entirely on the red Komodo. Actually a really nice pairing, um, especially because the size of this is so nice and compact, it's really gimbal friendly, and I did use the DJI RS2 uh, for all of that shoot. But now that you've seen some real world footage, now let's see how this Zhongi Speedmaster stacks up to something like this $2600 Zeiss Milvis 35mm f1.4 lens. Now, it is quite a big of a difference. You're talking about a $2,600 lens versus a $600 lens. But without further ado, roll it. I need to know everything. Who in the what in the where I need everything. Trust me, I hear what you're saying, but I like it's new what you're telling me. I'm curious, George. I hop in the Porsche. There's five and a horse. I'm ready for war. I'm coming for ghosts. To turn to a ghost, I need to know everything. Now you be surprised at the info you get is by letting them talk, so I'm letting them talk. Gotta keep quiet, maneuver in science, then let them in talk up their body, another one body, that's just how it go. I got some secrets, I'm shaking the game so they stay on their toes. Stay in your lane, not to stay on the go. I can not play with the pros and act like a rookie, so they overlook me, then I double up again, none of their knows, none of them cold. They just got lucky but never adapted, so I'm to the one if it's coming to blows. My enemies cutting it close, I let them think that they got me, but what do you know? I had them beat before we ever spoke, I'm ready for smoke. I need to know everything, who in the what in the where I need everything Trust me, I hear what you're saying, but I like it's new what you're telling me I'm curious, George, I hop in the Porsche, there's five and a horse I'm ready for war, I'm coming for ghosts, to turn to a ghost, I need to know everything Now they ain't go harder than me, they need a blade and a sheath A shank and a piece, a crate full of heat, an army of fleet A tank and a jeep, a navy at sea, where they a marine, an ace up their sleeve A team of marines, a freak on a leash, a beast with an apple I raise it for teeth and still they will lay at my feet Boy, you got the wrong one I gotta look over all of my publishing statements for Q1 as soon as the song's done I gotta call up my mama and tell her I made it as soon as my log's done I gotta read all my trade publications and sit my teeth till it is all done I think it's all fun I need to know everything, who in the what in the where I need everything Trust me, I hear what you're saying, but I like it's new what you're telling me I'm curious, George, I hop in the Porsche, there's five and a horse, I'm ready for war, I'm coming for ghosts, to turn to a ghost, I need to know everything. I need to know everything, who in the what in the where, I need everything. Trust me, I hear what you're saying, but I like it's new what you're telling me. I'm curious, George, I hop in the Porsche, there's five and a horse, I'm ready for war, I'm coming for ghosts, to turn to a ghost, I need to know everything. Okay, so quite a few differences there. Um, right off the bat, I will say that Zeiss lenses, I don't care what line you're using, whether you're using CP3s or old vintage contacts or even the Milvises, all Zeiss lenses are primarily known for three things. And those three things are sharpness, true to life colors, and the Zeiss 3D pop. Now, if you are not familiar with that phrase, Zeiss 3D pop, it really is just talking about how Zeiss lenses pull the foreground away from the background, kind of giving it a quote unquote 3D pop look. But those things I think kind of shine through when you compare it to something like this Zhongi Optics Speedmaster. 
one of the things that really most people notice right off the bat, because I was sharing this test with the Dog Times Patreon group and having them kind of choose which is which, you know, not telling them which one was which, most of them could tell which one was the Zeiss, just purely based on the color rendering alone, right? The Zeiss is just much more richer, much more vibrant in my opinion. Also, the Zhongi Optics does suffer from a little bit of focus breathing, so we see a little bit of that. Uh, another thing where I wasn't too impressed with is the way the Zhongi Optics Speedmaster handles the bokeh. The bokeh really reminded me of Rokinon cine lenses, so I wasn't impressed by that at all. However, one way where I really think the Zhongi Optics sticks out is the way it handles flares. Now that was really quite interesting and unique, especially when you compare it to something like the Milvis, because a lot of the reasons why people reach for the older vintage contact Zeiss is because that was much before Zeiss started putting a different T-Star coating on their lens, and really kind of that coating was designed to help fight against a lot of glare and flare, so you really don't get a lot of nice flares with the newer Zeiss lenses. That's one standout of the Zhongi optics, right? very kind of interesting flares, almost vintage quality flares. And I will say that it is a tad soft when it's ripped wide open at T1, but I think that's to be expected, right? This is a $600 uh, budget cine lens, you know, all things considered. Now, one thing I do want to point out is the exceptional build quality of this lens. Probably the most impressive part about this lens, and to me, in my opinion, is the build quality. It is a little tank. And it's actually really, uh, really, really quite nice. Really perfect. Uh, it's a perfect combo for something like the Red Komodo and a gimbal such as the DJI RS2. Uh, the native RF mount is all metal. It's really nice. It has really smooth and well dampened focus and iris rings. It has the T stops on both sides. It has the focal. Uh, measurements on both sides. It's a really, really impressive little well-built lens. It has an inner 77 millimeter filter thread, so that's pretty standard. Something else that's cool, you know, the, the conical kind of standard build of the front of the lens, very reminiscent of most cine lenses. It's nice. You know, before these bad boys were on the market, I would always recommend, you know, starting up filmmakers to look at the Rokinon Cines, but now that these are a thing, I would say this is a much better find, primarily for the build alone and the more compact size, right? The Rokinons are very large and all plastic. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that even though it does take inner 77 millimeter filters, I don't believe that the outer diameter ring is a standard 80 mil. I think it's a tad smaller. Um, it, I think it's more like 78, 79 mil. Now that's a little bit of an issue for all of my folks using clamp-on map boxes. Now let me show you how I arrived to this conclusion. So my Milvis lenses are all um, modded for cinematography use and they have a, you know, step-up rings. These are from Simod lens, right? So this is a 77 millimeter inner filter threads with an outer 80 millimeter diameter ring that you can put, you know, custom caps on. But it's really for clamp-on map boxes because the majority of them the smallest they go, I'm pretty positive, is 80 mil, right? I haven't seen any clamp on map, map boxes running smaller than 80 mil. So that's why, to me, it would be a little bit of an issue because let me show you how snug this, this 80 millimeter cap fits on this Simod 80 millimeter ring, right? It's a very snug fit. Now, if I go to put this on the Zhongi Optics, where you would assume this is also 80 millimeter auto diameter, it's loose. Right? It's not so loose that it'll fall off, but it is loose to where if someone was to quickly grab this out of your case and they weren't grabbing it the way they should, you could run into some problems, right? So it is a tad loose, but also it's primarily an issue with clamp on map boxes because if you are on a gimbal using a little feather weight like a bright tangerine map box where you're going handheld or you're on the easy rig and there's a lot of movement, you may end up losing that matte box just because it may not be able to clamp down smaller than 80 mil. Now I understand 78, 79 mil, that's very, very tiny increments, but it's, it's uh, as you can tell, that's quite a difference when you're talking about, you know, the, the firmness of the attachment, right? So that's just something I wanted to point out to be aware of primarily because I just thought it was a little odd. Um, but whatever it is, it is what it is, right? 
At the end of the day, though, uh, these are really nice lenses. Now, right now, they only have the 35mm available in RF mount. If you go to the Zhongyi website, it's a little odd, uh, the focal lengths that they have available, because, for instance, they have a 50mm. Um, however, it's only EF and PL only, right? So that's kind of interesting. Uh, they do have a 17 and a 25, but those are only available in Micro Four Thirds. The 35 they have available in RF, as well as Sony, as well as Fuji and Micro Four Thirds as well. Um, I did hear a little rumor where they will be dropping other focal lengths in RF, but right now the 35 is the only one available. But for $600, I think it's a very appealing and interesting buy. It's even more appealing to me if more of those focal lengths get rolled out for the RF mount. Again, I think it's the way to go for people starting out. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting because it, it's a much better find than, say, a Roken on Cine. Not only for the fastness, because T1 is insane, but also for that build quality. I cannot stress it enough. I'm most impressed by the build quality. And as we all know with the Komodo, it's not really known for its high ISOs, right? So when you combine something like a super fast T1 lens, it's quite interesting with the possibilities that opens up for you having that extra stop, right? I mean, 1.4 is fast, right? But one stop more when you need it, it's, it's always much, much appreciated. Um, so interesting find, interesting results there. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think about not only the real world footage, but also you know the comparison between a Zeiss Milvis Super Speed versus a Zhongyi Optics Speedmaster. You are talking about a $2,600 lens versus a $600 lens. You can tell though, I mean, look how ginormous these Milvis lenses are, where something like this is, very unique, very, very compact. I love the Wu-Tang color scheme. Um, I love, you know, it's very reminiscent of the Vedras, if you remember those bad boys. Um, so yeah, I think it's a very unique find. Um, I don't know, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And as always, I appreciate the support. If you guys are interested in a indie filmmaking club, that is what the Dog Times Patreon is all about. You know, I was talking about this over on the Dog Times Discord because we have our own private Discord chat. I started the YouTube as a whole way of documenting my journey uh, from transitioning as an actor into a cinematographer, right? I decided after 15 years of acting that I would step behind the camera. And for whatever crazy ass idea, I thought it would be interesting to include the internet in that uh, transition and taking everybody along on that vlog, that journey. And I quickly realized it probably wasn't the right idea because the internet is full of interesting people, right? <laughs> also what I found out though was that I wasn't able to share the projects I was working on because clients kind of frown upon that for obvious reasons, right? So that was kind of the reasoning for starting the Dog Times Patreon. Uh, but what it what it turned into is now it turned into, well, the YouTube is just all reviews now, and the Patreon is where people really get that behind the scenes uh, vlog journey of, of what it's like being a, an up and coming um, startup, really, uh, freelance cinematographer in Los Angeles, right? Uh, so it's this interesting thing that's happening right now. However, if you are interested in that kind of BTS journey, then that's the Patreon is, is really the place to be. Because, um, you know, the bigger jobs I get and, and, and the more things get a little bit more intense for me um, in terms of, of a company and as a startup, I kind of am not allowed just to throw everything out there. Um, so, yeah, again, links are down below. Check it out if you want. And also check out the lens, right? So as always, thank you for watching. If you like this video, then let it be known. The easiest way to show your support is just to tap that subscribe button. So... Thank you all, and I will see you next week. If I can figure out how to use the dumb lens cap. Oh, the fuck? Oh my god. What the fuck? Okay.